Hello. Hello! We're Lemon Knife! We are Lemon Knife. I'm, I'm John. Mia. And <laughs> today we are going to be doing our top covers. Woo! Um, 20 through 11 today. 20 through 11 then today. 10 to 1 the another next day. Time. Yes. And is there anything we need to say about them? Not really. No. All the right. Worst. My number 20, this is kind of a troll pick, but just oh boy. they can change the song this much. I've got to give it some props. This is Tom Sawyer by Mindless Self-Indulgence. <laughs> <laughs> Which The top of the song that made me pride! And that, that is not Mia doing a parody. That is basically yes, what it sounds like. Yes, the Tom like. and the it Sawyer and the Mean Mean Pride. twice as fast <laughs> as a already pretty fast song. It adds like this weird synth. <laughs> It is like a like brilliant. Yeah, it's like the original on Super Crack Cocaine. Super Crack Cocaine. So I don't want to listen to it, but I gotta give it. And yeah, the lyrics are literally the Tom, the Tom and, and the, the Sawyer, Sawyer and the Mimi Pride. They just had to get through all the lyrics, you I know, guess, and they said like, turn some of them into. <laughs> they added an extra thes, which I don't know if that really speeds up the lyrics. The Tom and the Sawyer. Well, well, okay. The today's Tom Sawyer. No, I guess that's true. Yeah. That's, <laughs> they're just, How much easier is that to say? They're just having a laugh, as they would say. Well, they're not, I don't know if they're British. They probably aren't. Continue. Uh, okay, but my first cross, Crossroads, uh, which was originally oh, by Robert cover, Johnson. Huh? That is, it was one of the first recordings ever made, Robert Johnson doing Crossroads. Cream redid it and made it into a song, you know, good for modern ears, I mm -hmm. guess. You know, good riff going through. And um, I thought it was a good, you know, update to like what was otherwise a very oh, like yeah. doing kind of yeah, a thing. Yeah, they, they certainly, I could imagine they revamped it big more time. energetic. Big time, yeah. So I really enjoy it. All right, getting to 19, we're out of, I know I don't want to listen to this, uh, but it's interesting, and into uh, solid pop songs. So this is Superman, uh, R.E.M. covering oh, yeah. The Click. Uh, and it's oh, I can't believe I didn't remember this. I don't even know if I've heard the original, but it is just I think we've listened to it and it's like, eh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just great catchy song by R.E.M. off Life's Rich Pageant. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, okay, the next one is kind of just sort of a solid, straightforward cover that, you know, improved on many of the elements. Uh, I Put a Spell on You, originally by Screamin' Jay Hawkins, recently redone by the great Annie Lennox. Huh. Um, so, yeah, the original, so the original is very, you know, it's very brum, jaunty. Yeah, brum, that kind brum, of a thing. Brum, brum. And I, and I like both of them for their own virtues, but she kind of made it a straight-ahead sort of, you know, almost cabaret style, you know. Uh, just, she has a great voice, and she sings it beautifully. And I think, um, you know, it was really, really impressively done. Although I think, like, both are neck and neck in terms of covers, like, you know, songs I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> we got to say it every time now. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right, my number 18, continuing with the straight-ahead covers, is Hard to Handle, uh, oh, the Black yeah. Crows covering Otis Redding. And they basically just take an already good song, kind of a bluesy song, and just mm -hmm. add a little more muscle to the guitar, add a little more, like, soloing, a little more, oh, just yeah. a fuller sound, better production, just because 40 more years of yeah. studio engineering. <laughs> and I like both versions a lot, yeah. but yeah, that might have the edge, certainly. All right, number 18. Very straightforward, and, not, and ultimately quite faithful, but uh, more memorable somehow, I think. I Love Rock and Roll, originally done by this weird, oh, yeah. obscure group by The Arrows. Rita, my Joan Jett in the back, Black Hearts. I think just something about it is just like a more memorable attitude. You know, Joan Jett just kind of a, you know, peak female attitude, right? You know, just up there with her leather and her, you know, and you just hear it in the vocals. You know, her leather, you know, hairsprayed yeah. vocals. Yeah, and, me. Yeah, exactly. It's just like really, really brilliantly done. I think just that right there boosts it so much, you know. Real good stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, so fitting my kind of general taste in music, almost none of these covers will be slowing anything down mm -hmm. or quieting anything down. Yeah, we'll Unlike a lot of covers, there's not too many of, like, the plinka, 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 I'm doing a ukulele cover <laughs> oh, of Nirvana or something like that. So much fitting the theme, this is a kind of synth-pop song turned into almost like a, a punk-pop song. And this is uh, Kids in America, the Mops oh, yeah. covering Kim Wilde. I like the original a lot. Um, but I, I like that version as well. It's in rock band, a very fun drum mm. part to play. Just very kind of a lot of, yeah, punk energy to it. Punkified, I guess, yeah. Very but at some stuff. point we'll cover that, probably. Oh, yeah, we gotta try that. That's true. Speaking of covers. Uh, okay, another blues redux is Storm Monday, originally long ago done by this T-Bone Walker guy. 
and uh, redone by the Allman Brothers, who really made it uh, the song that everyone knows is as Stormy Monday. So, I mean, that's kind of the big thing about these covers, is that many of them you don't even realize they're a cover. It's like, oh, right, that's technically, you know, but that one, and that's the version my mom does, and, you know, just, like, a great, you know, blues jam, and just, you know, great guitar work, great How's all the way riff around. go? I don't know if I know it. Uh, well, it's not really a riff, it's more like the... Does that riff? It's just kind of a slow, kind mm. of a blues, bluesy okay. thing. It's good stuff. I like it. All right, continuing on my punk theme, this is the one artist on my list who is basically exclusively a cover artist and somewhat of a comedic act. Oh, let me guess. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure you got it. <laughs> uh, Richard Cheese? No. Oh! No, this is Me First in the Gimme oh! Gimme. Oh! Okay, covering, even better. Covering Sloop John Sloop B John by Bay. the Beast Boys. Sloop John B! <laughs> <laughs> so all they do is kind of these punk, fast covers of lots of, like, old timey songs like John Denver and like that style of artist. Yeah. And just, they, they do a great live show. Yeah. Saw them at Riot Fest and um, Sloop John B is the the one where I download a studio version. I like the Beach Boys original, but I also really like the sped both, up version. Yeah. yeah, I have both on my phone. Brilliant. Yeah, I love all the covers to bits. Uh, okay, here's the one that I'm not even sure John knows the cover, which I didn't know mm. was cover for a very long time. It is Don't You Ever by Spoon. Really? So they apparently, and part of the reason I put this on my list is just, they apparently just like tour with this artist who, you know, eventually like went into oblivion. And so in order to kind of revive them, they covered their song. Ah, who's and the so, original artist? The Natural History, which ah. uh, tells you a lot about how their career went. It was a very <laughs> short-lived, yeah, I think they like opened Did, Have you for listened Spoon? to the original? Um, I did a long time ago. I feel like it's fairly faithful. I just okay. think it's, I, I think Spoon just kind of brings it out more. And so if you think of Don't You Ever, you're like, yeah. that's a Spoon song. That, that's probably one of my favorite of theirs. So I might have to see what else the natural history yeah. has going I, on. Actually, I have, I'm going to have to too, actually. Yeah. I've only learned that recently. So I was like, all right, this got to go on there. What a great cause, you know, just like, hey, remember these people. Yeah. <laughs> all right. My, this next one is the most recently recorded one of my list. Mm -hmm. This is from this summer Stereo Gum had a like oh, yeah, yeah. a fundraiser thing where people donated money to keep the website afloat and they did uh, artists covering two thousands. So this is an example where like it's almost less that the the song I like the song, the original and the mm -hmm. cover, but it's almost more impressive just how much they changed it. And this is an honest mistake. Originally kind of a dancey pop the punk bravery, song by yeah. the bravery. And they turned it into song. kind of this like epic ballad mm -hmm. by Shamir. Like it's like the tempo is slowed down by about twenty notches, and it's just it's something completely different. But the their but vocals the work clear, really well yeah. on. And maybe I don't know whether that's a person or a band. Maybe um, I have to check out more of what they did because I like yeah. that too. But whoever, whether Shamir is a person or a group, the person doing the vocals on that track does a great job with it. You know what else made it to his phone, and I'm talking to you. <laughs> Tipsy by clipping. Great version, also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know who I'm talking to. You got to point at him. <laughs> oh yeah, he, wa he does watch all these. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, clipping. <laughs> That's why I'm screaming it in its face, his virtual face. <laughs> all right. Okay, this one, I I think it's technically maybe not quite supposed to be on the list. I think they did this like right. Charity purposes, but they did it live, and I remember the, loving the heck out of it. It's like, did they do this? Did they record it? It doesn't matter if it's for charity purposes. I guess it's if it's recorded, but the first it's time I song. saw it, it was live. Okay, it's Bills, Bills, Bills. Originally by Destiny's Child, oh, redone by They Might Be Giants. Yeah. I thought that was just so ingenious, you know? Yeah. You know, taking this, you know, R&B, sort of very classic-sounding R&B uh. and going... I forgot about all of the like AV Club undercovers. I bet there are some great ones in there. Oh, we gotta like. They watch might be those giants. Again. Also, do tub thumping on that series. Oh, so. that makes total sense. And I love they might be giants to little bits and pieces. So, um, you know, obviously it gives them an edge. But I just thought this, you know, rework, you know, expert musicianship on all. Yeah, ends, they but, turned them fantastic. You know, despite being a fairly like light-hearted comedic band, they're all really, really good musicians. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Honorable mention for remembering that then to uh, Coheed and Cambria's like serious piano cover oh. of uh, a rush and a push in the land is ours you have to say it right by the smiths oh, oh rush <laughs> oh so ridiculous <laughs> all right my 14 this could be one of your ones where it's not clear if it, people don't know whether mm -hmm. it's a cover or not this is the letter uh yeah. originally by the box tops covered by joe cocker who kind of takes it sounds like it's in this little box and then he makes box. it sound like it's in this like room yeah <laughs> 
I mean, you could cut, you could put almost any Joe Cocker cover on this list. He's just like he did some originals, but like what I really remember him for was just reworking these songs. So much soul to his voice. And I love his voice to bits. And I was so sad Rip. when he died yeah. recently. Yeah, just it's like oh man, you know, the loss. Uh, but anyway, um, okay, this next one, I don't actually know, I like both of the versions, but A Hazy Shade of Winter gets props, uh, the mm. Bengals version by Simon and Garfunkel, they kind of, you know, they bring beautiful harmonies to it, uh, they kind of rockify it, then they get yeah. electric, and, um, I, uh, I really, really like this cover, I like both, but, um, it, you know, if you had a certain mood, if I'm feeling more energetic, I'm going to listen to the Bengals version, mm. it was a really, really good cover, you should listen to yeah, it. Yeah, that's, I, I feel like I've listened to it and not downloaded it, but... I would not, yeah, more energetic cover sounds yeah, exactly up my alley. Yeah, exactly. You should, you should take another listen this, these days. All right, here's a legend of folk covering a legend of funk. Can you guess the cover? No. I guess not a legend of folk. All right, anyway, <laughs> this is uh, Raspberry Beret. Okay. Um, being, it's originally by Prince, of course, and it's given kind of this more rocky, straight-ahead take by, uh, I guess technically not Warren Zevon, uh, Hindu Love Gods, which is right. the instrumentalists of R.E.M. with Warren Zevon on lead vocals. That's right. That's literally just what the band is. Yeah, and yeah, Peter Buck. Peter, uh, you have to call him, right? Peter Dollar Peter Bill. Peter Dollar Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Millions, is it? I think it was. Shout and, out to Scott Ackerman and Adam Scott. Bill, Bill, Bill Scott. Strawberry, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you get it. But yeah, they ju he just does a nice rock take on it. The original is great, too. Uh, yeah. I guess Michael Stipend wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, my, Michael Stipend was not present for that recording. <laughs> All right, uh, this one might be the one that's like when John's like, but you don't even remember that. But uh, ten fifteen Saturday night, uh, originally oh, by yeah. The Cure and redone by The Living End, uh, right from the debut. Which I really like their debut. Okay, I actually really like their debut. But um, you know, you listen to both of them side by side, and they just. It doesn't register they're the same song. And I think Living End really brought some spirit to it that the yeah, Cure didn't necessarily have there. Like, the Cure's, the Cure's version is good, but, like, you know, if they wanted you to listen to it, the Living End kind of slapped you over the head, bam, chopped bam, off bam, your bam, fingers bam, bam, in order bam, to make bam, you listen bam. to it. It's like, you will hear this song of if we have to behead you. but then, And then you won't be hearing it because your head will be off and you'll be dead. So maybe that's not the best idea. Say all of that with an Australian accent. You got it, definitely. Okay. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> All right. So um, here in another of these kind of songs by 60s people being covered is Do You Love Me? Oh, yeah. uh, which is covered by, another 60s by the Contours, person. covered by 60s kind of punk pioneers, the Sonics. Mm -hmm. And they just like, they take it like, they take it up to 11. They're just like yelping everything. I say take up to 15. Take it up to 15. <laughs> They still, they got this wailing saxophone. They're just, like, adding a ton more, of like, force and boom to it. It was another one of Nigel Tufnell's amps, but it didn't it didn't roll off the tongue as easily as this goes to 11. Yep. So they didn't, <laughs> they didn't use it. They've got their caterwauling to 15. max ability here. <laughs> caterwauling to 15. Caterwauling. 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 Please caterwaul. Caterwaul. Catterwall. Catterwall, meow. All right. Uh, we're not going to do this for the next 10 minutes. That's okay. Uh, save it for later by the, oh, in yeah. parentheses, English Beat, because I think they were called the English Beat here and the Beat in England or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, brought to life by Pete Townsend. Which and the Beat, not the Elvis Costello song. Not the Beat, so, yes. In certain other jurisdictions. <laughs> There's just so many, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, this, this was a... This was live, technically, but it got recorded by the Deep End Live uh, in rendition of Pete Downs' live groups. And I thought it was a really, really interesting... I heard this one first, mind you, so I got too used to that version. But I liked it so much that... Um, I actually covered it myself, you know and that. And you covered it in that style. I did, yeah. I covered it in that style. And John was like, well, I you're smoldering it? vocals to it. Smoldering... Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was on bass. Um, smoldering is maybe a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> You know, why don't we move on? I'm going to All stop right. speaking nervously All about right. myself. <laughs> My number 11 is not a combination you would expect. This is, I can't forget, the Pixies covering Leonard Cohen. Really? Uh, yes. You're kidding. Um, huh? No, I'm not kidding. Uh, another one that they've covered that almost made the list was them covering Warren Zevon's Ain't That Pretty At All, which mm. is a more natural fit with it being a very Yelpy original song. 
Um, but I can't forget, it's almost, it might be like the straightest the Pixies have played it. Like, huh. they're almost just doing kind of like this kind of straightforward rock take on the song. The chorus, I think there's backing vocals in the original, but Kim Deal just does fantastic. I can't forget. Oh, yeah, she's always got an interesting backup vocal for sure. So it's just kind of this great take on, like, Leonard Cohen's great lyrics, as you would expect from him. Absolutely. I feel like sometimes his lyrics are brought more to life by other people, even though he was the great writer behind it. Yeah, I think someone, I think it was R.E.M. did a great version of First We Take Manhattan of his. It definitely brings his songwriting to life. Uh, Speaking of people bringing other people's songwriting to life, uh, we have the theme song to season one of The Wire. I mean, Way Down in the uh, Hole. Yeah. Uh, uh, first done by Tom Waits and then redone by the Blind Boys of Alabama. Uh, Tom Waits' version is my second to least favorite uh, <laughs> theme song <laughs> in The, the Wire. Kids. After the <laughs> damn kids. <laughs> and their satanic rituals at the end. Keep it in the oh. hole. Down in the hole. It's like, everybody okay? What, where, where did they record this? Is this in a kid's killing cult? Anyway, uh, but yeah, that one is just, you know, I was over with that great bass line, obviously. I got to give that props. And just soulful vocal. And uh, I really, really like it. And, um, you know, Tom Waits, you know, he writes good songs. And I feel like they're always better when other people do it, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, the Steve Earl version almost made my list. That, that's a great my version, too. Them. Yeah, I really like the Neville version. country Arthur's. blues take. The, the Neville Brothers version is also yeah. really good. So uh, just really anything but season four. Uh, All right, and two more honorable mentions to REM-related things because there are so many of them. Uh, they did a great cover of Wichita Line Man. Oh, uh, yeah. And then uh, the, walk, fun, no. the Walkman <laughs> I th- and a terrible cover of <laughs> Fun Time by Iggy Pop. And, then, and another terrible <laughs> cover of King of the Road by Roger Miller. Yes, and then the Walkman did a great version of their Driver 8 kind of turning into this, like, oh, Tom roll thing. That sounds nice. Yeah. We'll but yeah, back. that'll do it for 20 to 11.